Well, artificial intelligence is just one area that is held back by the limitations of the design of today's computers. With me is Ian Page from Oxford University, who's doing research into the fifth generation machines. Ian, what other applications need a significant increase in computer speed? Well, there are a number of fifth generation applications, such as speech and vision understanding, where, for instance, we want to take a computer picture and understand what's in it rather than just recognize it. And there are some more traditional applications like weather forecasting and flight simulation, which need massive amounts of computation. Why does weather forecasting particularly need so much Well, the weather models that are on computers today are getting more and more complex all the time. And for instance, it makes no sense to take 24 hours, 25 hours to work out tomorrow's weather. Right, clearly. Now, what are the limitations of today's machines? Is there a, a wall somewhere we can't get through? Well, the speed of computers are dictated by the speed of the individual components, and we know already from theoretical studies that there is a limit, for instance, set by the speed of light. So we know that today the computers which we'll be able to build in the future won't get more than, say, a thousand times faster than they are today. And that's not fast enough, a thousand That's not times. fast enough for problems that I have, for instance, which need upwards of a thousand mainframes. So the only way ahead is in parallelism, having lots and lots of computers working together on the same problem. And for instance, here's part of a computer I've been building at Oxford, and the whole machine has over 300 processors in it, and this is just 42 in-MOS transputers here, and each of these execute over 20 million instructions per second. And this isn't enough. So that means on that board you've got 800 million instructions per second. That's right. And that's still not enough for the sort of work you're doing. Not enough for these really big problems. But w we've got multiprocessor machines today and they're quite hard enough to program. Programming something like that must be a nightmare, isn't it? Even debugging it. It is. Programming and debugging is a really big problem. We don't know how to do it. We don't have the languages for parallel machines, although we have some pointers towards the languages of the future from mathematics, for instance. But because of the difficulty, I think it's as exciting now programming these new machines as it was for Alan Turing after the Second World War. Thank you. We'll come back to you later. Well, the speed of a computer running a program depends on the number of instructions the processor can carry out each second. One way to increase its speed is to reduce the number of those instructions. Here at Stanford University in California, John Hennessy has produced a chip with a reduced set of instructions, a RISC chip. The basic idea behind RISC is to try and increase a computer performance by trying to concentrate on the most frequently executed instructions and to increase the performance of the entire application by making those instructions run faster. Each instruction must justify its existence by actually showing how it contributes to, to improved performance. Uh, the instructions that tend to get dropped are more complicated ones. Uh, for example, the VAX has an instruction which does polynomial evaluation. Uh, that's instruction which is so infrequently used that its benefits are, are virtually non-existent. This is, actually brings up one of the sort of fallacies about risk. People say, uh, well, you take this machine and you uh, take out something, so therefore I've, I've really lost something. And the, the analogy I like to use is one of a, of a racer, who, an athlete who's running a race. Clearly, if he reduces and loses some weight, you haven't lost something, you've actually gained something. And what we try and do in designing risk machines is to use the excess silicon area that we've recovered. We've actually gotten back. It's no longer wasted. We've recovered it. We use it for something that will really improve performance. All the straightforward, simple instructions remain, and the more complex ones are broken down into two or more simple instructions which then run faster. I think if you were to say uh, what idea is m most common to all the risk machines that have, have been done, the idea of single cycle execution is probably the most predominant concept. Every chip has an internal clock which ticks millions of times a second. A standard chip could take several ticks or clock cycles to complete one instruction. But a RISC chip executes its simpler instructions much faster, averaging little more than a single cycle per instruction. One of the key concepts in hardware design is the notion of pipelining, which is very much like the concept of an assembly line uh, in a factory. Several jobs are being done at once in rhythm. And just as a new car is begun at regular intervals, so the chip aims to start a new instruction at each tick of its internal clock. One of the ways that we try and do that is by scheduling the pipeline in software and actually trying to keep the pipeline working at a very rhythmic rate so that we get tick, 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 tick. One instruction on every clock tick. 
In, in other machines that don't use some of these techniques, you tend to see a less rhythmic behavior. You might get tick, 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 and all of a sudden you hit a complicated instruction that takes many clock cycles, and then instead of continuing execution, you stop while that instruction is executed. You have a hiccup in the pipeline. Well, John Hennessy's MIPS chip is at the heart of the new prime three-dimensional graphics workstation, the Pixel 5500, which was launched in the States on Monday. And these are the sort of graphics it's uh, producing, but unfortunately we'll have to wait until the summer for the British version to be launched. Well, it's not only the Americans that are in the RISC business. Acorn have been evaluating their own 32-bit RISC processor called ARM, Acorn RISC Machine. The evaluation system has been around for some time, priced at about £4,500. But this is the first public showing of Acorn's development RISC machine. It's about 35 times faster than an IBM PC, and indeed it's 20 times faster than this BBC Master here, as you can see from this demonstration. In fact, at the moment, they're both calculating a 3D graph based on sines and cosines. The Master is the small graph inset at the bottom right of your screen. Now, these machines also run the familiar BBC Basic. So, where are we? Let's see how they cope with the PCW benchmarks. Now, these are a set of very short, simple programs to test how fast a machine will perform various mathematical tasks. Now, the RISC machine, ah, we have a bit of a hiccup, but it has finished already all eight tasks. Uh, it should have timed itself out there earlier this afternoon. It told me that it completed those with an average time of just over half a second. But there seems to be a glitch at the moment. Studio conditions proves we're live anyway. The basic runs so fast on the RISC chip that software which could have been written in machine code, would have had to be written in machine code, can now be written in basic. So it's power without the agony. Let's load up another demonstration see if that works. The RISC chip itself is just one of a set of four which together make up the complete computer. This graphics chip here is also pretty impressive. Well, have a look at this. This is a resolution of 640 by 512 and there are also 256 colours per pixel or per point on the screen. The real beauty of this graphics chip is you can choose how much memory you want to use on the screen and also how you're going to divide it between resolution and number of colours. Well, that could be ideal for desktop publishing. In fact, you could go up to a resolution of a thousand by a thousand. Well, that's the dulcet tones of the sound chip, which give you close to CD quality music. And of course, that can be processed through the computer. But this isn't just a micro for running BBC Basic very fast. The philosophy of RISC means that with different software, the same machine could be turned into an MS-DOS or a Unix machine. It's very interesting to contrast this machine with Acorn's major competitor in the education market, the RML Nimbus, which has established itself as the best-selling 16-bit educational machine. Now, this one, this new design, the Nimbus VX, is based around a standard Intel 80386 microprocessor. That's a full 32-bit chip, but in no way is it a RISC design. Basic benchmarks on this machine are some three times slower than those on the Acorn ARM. But the Nimbus is compatible with IBM MS-DOS or Unix software, and what's more, it's available now, well, in April anyway, priced at about £5,000. Of course, Acorn have the advantage that RISC process processors are very cheap to produce, about a fifth of the cost of a traditional processor. But first, they'll have to turn this prototype into a product. They'll have to deliver software to make RISC run off-the-shelf business and scientific packages. And of course, they'll have to get the price right. If they could produce this RISC computer for, well, the cost of a master system, say £900, 20 times the speed for no extra cost, well, they'd have a very competitive machine. Well, besides producing